We are live in the Positive Life Club. Just making sure I can see myself here. Live on Facebook. All right. Let me see here. Okay, yes, we are live. Good morning. I went a little early last week. Oh, I got too excited and I did an hour earlier. So my apologies. I am um, at the right time, which is about four o'clock, you guys' time there in Ireland. It is uh, 10 a.m. here in Kansas City. So look at all the time travel that's actually happening right now. And it is going to bring us to my most favorite topic of all time is time and space continuums, new earth and 5D leaving the matrix of third dimension. So hopefully you guys got an opportunity to watch uh, my little workshop that I did last week. And that was kind of a introduction of giving you guys an alternate concept of, of you know, what, what this process of evolution is, is actually like. Um, hopefully the metaphors made sense to you. I like in my teachings um, that I do all over the world to really make the understanding of our ascension, our evolution, the big shifts that are happening, the global awakening that's taking place right now, as easy to understand in the formats of the life that you are living. You know, it's it's really easy for us to get really caught up in, you know, outer world, cosmic, galactic events. And it, it can be quite distracting because that all seems fantastic, right? And then when you look around your life, you're like, well, I'm still paying bills and I'm still doing laundry. You know, I'm, I'm not even using my kinetic power yet or my telepathy yet. And I'm still responsible for what is on planet Earth, time and space and matter. And the matter that you have created through your thoughts, feelings, emotions, actions, behavior, right? So in order for us to get to the motherland or the 5D reality or um, utopia or heaven on earth as it's been described in the books of time. We really need to understand that the process is a lot less sexy than we would like it to be. You know, it's like, oh, I wanna take a pill. Do I take the, the red pill or the blue pill? You know, can I quantum leap this? Can I just, you know, close my eyes and lucid dream this? Can I just, hit delete, right? And and technically, in a quantum universe, that is a 100% hell yes. But you are in a quantum universe that is being constructed by time and space and is altered through conditions known as belief systems. Now, you have picked up belief systems since the beginning of your incarnation. You were actually put into a body that had its own the belief systems downloaded into it. And the belief systems that you obtained through your body at birth were basically the stories of earth, all of the things that have gone on on earth. It's a byproduct of the lineage, just as a root or a seed would grow a tree, you are a leaf of that tree. So you are having this physical experience in a body, but a lot of what is in the body is also consciousness and it has memory, it has ideas, it has belief systems rooted at the core essence of its subatomic particles. And then you incarnate with your karmic Akash or your, your you know, galactic Google, right? That you have as far as the format that you brought in, the all-knowing I am, the source energy incarnated in human form. And then you're incarnated in a body that is kind of like getting from going from an iPhone 11 going to an iPhone 6, right? And I use the smartphone analogy a lot in teaching this ascension process because it's such a perfect metaphor. You know, it's con constantly getting upgrades that you can take or not take. There's always a new one coming out, so you feel like you're always in the uh, outdated model, right? And we are sitting in bodies that are programmed to suffer, literally. They are uh, programmed to judge. Just and uh, so much more than just discern. We are constantly looking from a brain that is a left and right hemisphere, masculine, feminine, yin and yang, dark and light. So it's almost like there is two different identity constructs within you, that, that dark, that critical, that separation, that judgment, that slave mind mentality, that hive mind, that sheeple personality, 
within you. And then there's that rebel without a cause, that rule breaker, that imaginative, you know, being that creative spark, the the irresponsible child, the nonsense, the laughter, the play, right? And then you you kind of mix that in with the analytical pressures of what is and the indoctrination of what has been and what has always become and what will become based on the past. And it's very confusing, right? It's trying to mix a dessert and a dinner together, salty and sweet together. And it doesn't really mix as well as you think it would, like some of those foods. So with the idea of how we actually obtain a fifth dimensional reality in our holographic universe, because it's not like literally I'm walking on the bridge and I've got my backpack full of rocks and trauma and failures and it's really heavy and I'm trying to get to you know, 5D with my thumb out, although I don't trust people and I really don't trust strangers, and I really don't trust anyone, so I keep pulling my thumb in, and I keep pulling my thumb out, and I'm trying to hitchhike, but I don't know the way, and I don't know if I deserve to go, and I don't know if I'm worthy, because I'm sitting in a body that has been programmed, you know, to not be worthy because of the color of my skin, or the gender that I have picked that may be wrong for my conscious choice, um, and I am in a constant state of confusion, which looks like a life that stays kind of idle, um, it stays a life on a hamster wheel that 10 steps forward, 10 steps back. You put yourself out there, someone attacks you, you break something, you lose something, you get sick, you know, it doesn't go through at the last minute, somebody ghosts you and boom, you fall back into your old patterns and that critical mind says, see, it's not safe out there, you can't go. So what I wanted to use this particular session for with you guys is to really break down why you are not letting yourself go because it is really that fast. It is a quantum leap, it is a decision. It is a whole body, whole consciousness decision to be in the fifth dimension of infinite possibilities, infinite choice, infinite creation, instant manifestation. That's how I would describe the fifth dimension. Now, that's a lot, that's overwhelming, especially with someone with a track record, maybe like you're looking at in the mirror, of not making such great choices all the time, or having a destructive personality, because that, that rebel inside of you can't follow the rules, but then you have to fall back into the rules because you can't pay your bills, and you're constantly at a struggle with yourself. So, I will tell you, the, the people that are sailing into the fifth dimension with ease have a few baseline characteristics that you're going to want to jot down because these are the things you're going to be working towards this year in your vision quest, right? The vision quest of the bridge from third dimension to fifth dimension. And what is fourth dimension? As we talked about last week, it's the bridge. It's the wonky bridge, the rope bridge that's a million years old that you have no idea if it can support you, taking you into a dark forest, which on the other side looks like a rainbow city, right? Or a rainbow community. And that is a, a perfect metaphor. So what are you going to need, right? I always say people are like, I want you to help me open my clairvoyance, just help me get my, you know, get my superpowers back. And I said, okay, so intuition has one unique, one unique definition. And you're going, what does intuition have to do with getting to 5D? Well, obviously you're in a holographic universe. So you're going to have to intuit yourself into this new dimension. If this is something that you would like to create experience, become in this, in this incarnation, in this lifetime, that you're sitting in this meat body that's really just a quantum supercomputer, right? You got to learn how this thing works. You got to learn about what's in it. You got to be fully responsible for what was here before you arrived. You got to clean out your hard drive. You gotta install new software. You gotta take the updates when they come, right? So what does that look like? What is the word that you could look at intuition and think, okay, what is intuition? The word that is intuition, that is the most understandable in your human language is trust. I trust myself. I am trusting. I trust my gut, I trust my heart. I question because I trust my thoughts, right? The gut, the pull, the me, myself, and I, 
the gut brain, the heart brain, the mind brain, all coherent, right? Now, this is when we get into that masculine feminine energy because the masculine is all about, you know, hunter, gatherer, adventurer, pioneer, but it is also logical, it's very analytical, it's very rooted, it's very stubborn, right? And the divine feminine is all about the nurturing nest that's more like a wildflower that blows in the wind. So there's paradox and duality mixed in both the masculine and feminine energies. So when there are opposing forces going on where it's like this nonsensical heart pull within you is saying, let's be authentic, let's trust ourselves, let's follow our intuition, let's follow our joy, let's follow our highest excitement. Let's go into the uncertainty. Let's go fearlessly in the direction of what feels more like home. The word resonance, home, resonance, right? Your home is your resonant field. What is the pull? It's not going to make sense in a third dimensional paradigm based in black and white, wrong and right, comparison, separation, and judgment. It's your truth will not make sense in the old world. This is why you've always felt like the crazy train amongst the sheeple in your life because you don't fit into their world. You don't quite fit into the, the major, major woo-woo world. And you're somewhere kind of going back and forth between fearlessness and deep-rooted fear. So if trust is going to be one of your engines, to make it from 3D to 5D. What is another engine, right? Because you're gonna, it's gonna require you to put a little fire underneath your behind to get you moving because most of you are complaining, but you're comfortable in your uncomfortability. That's a word, right? You're comfortable being uncomfortable because you can complain about it, you can vent about it, you can keep reading about it, you can keep certifying to get out of it, you can keep hiring practitioners to wiggle your energy around, or you could get serious, right? You could get rooted in your trust. You could trust the unknown, which is what the infinite possibilities is. You could learn to embrace the celebration of surprise. You could anchor yourself in surrender. Because there's two other major engines you're going to need besides trust to move from the third dimensional collective belief system anchoring you in time and space and generating a false sense of reality that you are seeing through your filtration systems of your five senses that is your hologram. If you want to see something else, you have to see something else. So you have to trust in infinite possibilities. You have to take a limit and you have to turn it into a possibility. You have to have desire. You have to be so sick and tired of being sick and tired. You have to be so sick of definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different results, having expectations, getting blindsided, getting heartbroken, going back into grief, moving up to the stages of grief, back into bargaining and settling, and then settle for your next adventure. Settling. You did not come here to settle. You came here to be extraordinary. So that rat race, right, of condemning yourself, going into guilt and shame, moving back into grief, allowing yourself to dust off the particles of your old life and set a new intention and embark on a new journey, only to settle because you're actually terrified of going any further or upgrading your life or dating above your pay grade or starting that business or putting yourself out there on YouTube, you go, mm, I'm safe here. I'm gonna stay right here. And therefore you settle for being in your mind, a big fish in a little pond and you're used to being the smartest person in your room and that makes you your ego feel safe, but it does not make your heart sore. So the second vehicle engine that you will need to get from this bridge, this side of the bridge, to that side of the bridge, after trust, is desire. 
Desire is our first step of manifestation. If you guys have taken my manifestation workshop, there's seven steps. I've got them tattooed on my spine, right? Seven steps, formula of creation. First step is you must have desire. You must want change on a visceral level. Even the cells inside of you that are saying, this is what is, this is our life. Yes, this sucks, are saying, you know what? I'm not buying into this right now. I think I want to change from a subatomic space, from the you that was before the you, that is the you after you needs to want this. It needs to be such a raging desire that you will move because you gotta have something to move you. You gotta have a GPS system, guys. You gotta have your GPS system and that is what we lovingly call trust, which means even when it feels like it's going the wrong way, and the nonsense of the detours are taking you through the dark nights of the soul because it's technically a shortcut and every negative is a shortcut and every negative is the easy way out because you have to learn courage and you have to remember who you are and you have to start accessing that gut information and that heart space information and that universal information that is coming from your crown, not your subatomic earth-based matter formed memory centered mind right you're getting it from your high levels it's like above your pay grade information and that's what happens when you get all the voices away from you and you unentangle from all of people's energy around you and you begin to navigate and pull from the direction of your desire your desire and your trust leading you into your final vehicle that is required, and this is gonna sound like a, a crazy twist because it actually doesn't make sense because your two first engines are based in forward motion and your third engine to get you from the third dimension to the fifth dimension is surrender, which is the seventh step of manifestation. Your first step is desire, boop, 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 boop. Seven step, I won't go into it today because we have a limited time. Seven step, surrender. Now, surrender in the third dimension means I give up, I wave the white flag, pop another failure in my tank, in my backpack full of rocks that weighs me down and makes me feel unworthy and undeserving. That is not what we see as surrender in the fifth dimension. We see surrender in the fifth dimension as I'm turning over the guidance. I've gone as far as I can go. I have run as much as I can run uh, to my belief system, to my level of understanding, to my level of awareness. This is as far as I can go. That's it. I cannot go anymore. I don't have any more money to get to the next space. I don't have the right people, places, and things yet manifested in my reality. I don't have a new solution or a thought that's not based in a problem. I do not have the feelings to support where we are heading, and I do not have that mountaintop view because I still, in my human form, that am on my process of evolution, am still looking through the goggles of the valley. So therefore, I can only see the next 100 yards in front of me, and if I want to see more, go more, access more, receive more guidance, receive more help, receive more potential um, situations to influence my journey, to assist my journey, to feed me on my journey, I have to surrender. Now, this is very, very, very difficult for your analytical, ego-based, human, very, very mentalized, memory-centered reality because surrender at a core level is a frequency that means failure. And trust means lack of safety if I have to trust in something, right, that I don't know is real. And desires are usually rooted in pain or lack. So you can see why more people are not running across this bridge right now full speed because they keep stopping themselves based on what is anchored in time and space, what is, right? The best gurus on the planet remind us and say, it's never what is, it's never your circumstances, 
that are dictating your manifestation abilities. It is your state of being. It is the state of consciousness that you reside in. And I will tell you, I say this on stage every time I do a tour, you're gonna have to learn that fear is your friend, okay? Fear is just a danger signal coming from the primal part of you that you're either doing something new or there's a danger around your memory center that could cause you some sort of harm. But what you don't realize about fear is that it's also just a symptom of you in a new situation that the body is unease with and it doesn't understand if you're gonna be safe. It's not telling you, that's not intuition. It is telling you that you are somewhere that you've never been. Now, fear is going to pull through your memories and find circumstances that feel like this new situation and remind you of all the times that you've been in new situations or you've put yourself out there or you've been authentic or you've listened to your internal guidance system and you've trusted yourself and it hasn't ended so well. It's almost like, as soon as you go, okay, I'm gonna walk on this bridge, your logical mind goes, hold on, let me go into the Google memory base of your subconscious. Let me dive through all the times you did something new. Yes, you were attacked, you lost something, you failed, you didn't finish it, um, it broke down right before it manifested. So do you really wanna do this again? Because that's a lot of energy for us. You see, your subconscious doesn't know anything past its future, present moment and the past. It has to fear your future based on who you've been in the past. So one of your biggest, biggest triggers is when you've done a whole bunch of work on yourself and you go back into that old family unit and they, they point out that you're that old version of yourself and you're going, no, I'm new, I'm new, I'm new. And it's a big trigger. Like, I'm not that girl anymore. I'm not that guy anymore. Look at who I am now. And they're going, No, I only see you as that eight year old, you know, screw up who didn't finish school or whatever. And that is the reflection of your subconscious, your intimate, your intimate players in your virtual reality is based in into me, I see. So it's looking deep into your subconscious and reminding you of who you're not and who you used to be. So there's so much that we can overcome here. And there's so much that we can do to start running on the bridge and moving into infinite possibilities. But it is gonna require those three things. So if you guys are really interested in getting to this new world that exists, trust me, there's been thousands of books written about it, if not you know, hundreds of thousands, there's thousands and thousands of teachers just like me saying the same exact thing about what it looks like over there. We are not full of BS here. This is a true, true story, but it is going to require a lot of present time, moment by moment choice, right? Desire, trust, because when you trust yourself, you make a choice, even if it's the wrong choice. I'm gonna tell you guys the secret. You cannot make the wrong choice ever because the wrong choices get you to the right choices faster, usually. It's the ones who cho choose and not waver. Is this a good choice? Is that a good choice? Is this a good choice? What you're actually doing is you're losing trust for yourself. You're losing momentum. You're losing speed. You're actually better off making a choice, running towards it, and course correcting. Because as soon as you get close to something, you can discern and decide whether you actually want to have that experience or not, course correct, move into another direction and keep running. But you'll notice that you're always in forward motion. You're always in that forward motion of that holographic experience of what 3D to 5D looks like. If you make no choice or you constantly need to pick up the phone and go, well, what do you think about this choice? And what do you think about this choice? And what does this book say about this choice? And what does this podcast say about this choice? And what does this guru say about my choice? You've now just spent probably a couple of weeks paying ping pong and you know pinball machine, basing your intuition, your hopes and dreams, right, your engine on what someone else feels and thinks or someone else's experience, and it's doing you a huge disservice because. Everybody on this planet who's having a unique holographic experience, it's intertwined, but has a different set of universal blueprints. They have a different set of belief systems. 
They have different set of rooted fears, different conditions, different purposes for being on the planet, different agendas, and different motivations. So if I am going to learn to trust myself, I have got to turn down the peanut gallery of the world, and I have got to start breathing my body, getting back inside my body, listening, and the answers don't come in a loud, critical manner like ego does. It comes in waves of whispers. It comes through synchronicities. It comes from lyrics in a song. It comes from right after a good laugh. It comes right after a good rest, a long drive, a hot shower, a deep soak, because it's waiting for that subconscious to get out of the way to give you the message that you are not looking at because you're not in the present moment when it is received, okay? So let's recap since we have four minutes left. I am gonna show you guys over the next four weeks now how you can take full responsibility, which means the ability to respond, listen, hear, feel, taste, see, know your way there because it is kind of a little bit like floundering in, in deep water because you've never been. The body has never been. So it doesn't have the memory centers of where you're going. The timelines of the new world are not anchored enough in the Akash for you to be able to pull from them and see them except if you can remember your future present except if you can time travel over and, and see from those different probabilities that exist. You are literally navigating this journey based on your desire because your desire is the thread that is pulling you to higher self. Higher self is saying, come on, I'm using this desire. I'm using this carrot, this money as a carrot. I'm using the boyfriend as a carrot. I'm using the new home as a carrot. Just follow the carrot. And the trust is going hot or cold. It feels like I'm getting colder. Good, let's turn in this direction. It feels like I'm getting hot. It's a game of hot and cold because you are a child of the universe. And so you're here to play the game. This is not a race, it's a game. It's a game of shoots and ladders, it's a treasure hunt, it's you against you, it's all the darkness of the whole universe locked inside your memories, right? It's the whole entire cosmic source energy, of God itself, wrapped up in your heart, right? You have the navigation. You've gotta get back to trusting you. What is it that you desire? Who are you? And play the game of hot and cold. And when you cannot go anymore, there is no more that you can go, you surrender. I have gone as far as I go. I am turning over my reality. I am taking a nap. I'm going to go laugh. I'm gonna go play. I'm gonna go have some celebration of this beautiful meal that the earth has provided. I'm gonna go spend time with high influential friends that are abundant and free. I am going to go enjoy the beauty that is earth in this now moment and celebrate how far I have come today. And that wraps us up for our second week of the new earth in five dimensions. And if you resonated with this, obviously I only have a 30 minute window um, for this particular opportunity, but you can find thousands of, um, thousands of archived material throughout YouTube, podcast, my podcast, my website, jessicaalstrom.com. I've got Facebook groups, Jessica Allstrom Alchemist, where there's tons of live recordings, um, but I will use this facility, the Positive Life Club, to teach you guys as much as I can in a short amount of time and remind you of who you are and what you came to do and that you are infinite potential of light, that nothing you have done in the past is ever gonna hold you back. It isn't capable of it because it is gone. The past doesn't exist except in your memories and those can be transformed from a limited belief system into a possibility. It's time to turn our pain into purpose, guys, and walk happily in the direction of our joy. I'll see you guys on the flip side and I'll see you next week at this time. And thank you so much for this platform. It's an honor to be here. Enjoy your weekend. Today is my 45th birthday. And so I am going to celebrate my steps forward in this time and space. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you soon.